Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Dan Sullivan. I'm a member of the programming team uh, here at Film at Lincoln Center. Uh, just want to welcome you all to this, the, uh, the first talk uh, that'll be associated with our, uh, our annual festival, uh, Art of the Real, which is uh, kicking off uh, in, its, uh, in this exciting new virtual iteration uh, tomorrow. Um, so yeah, uh, I have some very special guests uh, here with me who I'll introduce in a moment. But first, just a quick bit of housekeeping. Um, I want to thank HBO, the year-round presenter of Film at Lincoln Center's uh, talks. Uh, I also want to thank Mubi, a valued partner of Art of the Real for the fifth consecutive year. So uh, yeah, we appreciate their commitment. Um, yeah, so, so Art of the Real typically takes place in late April. Uh, it, of course, did not this year. We have uh, uh, postponed it in, until now when we're ready to begin. It's kind of it's, uh, this virtual iteration of it. Um, and we just wanted to uh, sort of go through uh, a little bit of the history of the festival just to kind of set the table for uh, what you're all going to see uh, uh, from this year's lineup, and then maybe we'll get into some of the um, thematic strands and and highlights, and uh, and we also want to take any uh, questions that you all might have. So uh, uh, please do feel free to use the Q and A function at the uh, bottom of Zoom uh, to send us questions that uh, I can put to our panelists, who I'm now going to introduce. Uh, uh, so uh, first, uh, my colleague, uh, Dennis Lim, Director of Programming at Film at Lincoln Center. Um, hi, Dennis. Hi, Dan. <laughs> and another one of my colleagues, uh, um, Rachel Rakes, uh, Program at Large for Film at Lincoln Center. Um, another one of the founding co-programmers of this festival. Hi, Rachel. Hello. <laughs> And we're also joined by Almudena Escobar Lopez, uh, who worked on this year's edition as a program advisor. Hello, Almudena. Hola. All right. Um, so yeah, let's let's begin by looking back. And uh, I think we don't normally love to to take this retrospective uh, sort of um, angle, but. Um, uh, when talking about new programs, at least, but in this case, I, you know, it's impossible not to, I think, because this festival typically takes place in, uh, in April, um, you know, it was programmed and, and so on uh, back then, but now, you know, circumstances, of course, forced us uh, to move things around. And uh, it's kind of, I feel like it's kind of impossible to talk about what's coming up without talking, without looking back in some way. So, um, uh, Dennis and Rachel, maybe we could just begin by talking about some of the uh, kind of considerations or, um, you know, the things that were on your mind that kind of precipitated the uh, creation of Are the Real. Uh, this is the seventh edition of the festival. So, um, so whatever you can remember uh, would be useful. <laughs> um, I can start, I guess. Um, sure. I think... You know, at the time we were thinking of what was more of a uh, the beginning or an, an emerging strand of, of you know hybrid cinema works and more and kind of a revival of more uh, experimentation with with documentary nonfiction forms that we were seeing starting from like say maybe 2010 on um, that the documentaries that were taking this kind of that were like abandoning uh this kind of mass sort of narrative documentary um approach and, and taking different forms of experimentation um and different kinds of you know uh mixing uh, fiction and non-fiction uh doing kinds of mixing sort of traditional experimental film aesthetics and tactics with uh, investigations into the real we started to see this as like um something that was happening all over the world and something that we could sort of call something and uh, you know, put it into, put these things together um, as their own kind of, as their own kind of festival, because at the time, they were kind of unclassifiable. Um, there was, they were either things that didn't quite fit into a documentary festival, almost didn't fit into an experimental festival, maybe had their own strand in uh, more of a kind of larger, you know, more narrative focused, um, you know, mainstream festival, but we didn't feel like had a home necessarily. 
Um, I think in the in the years since then, uh, I think the if you can call it a genre, not really, but the, these these approaches have kind of grown and 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 spread, and there are many sort of many more filmmakers dealing in this way, and so um, we're now at a time where. Yeah, where, where we feel like there's so much more that we can deal with and we're almost wondering if, if we are an other anymore or where these fit. So we can start it off in that kind of more vague uh, sense of the approach and maybe Dennis can continue with the more. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I think that's, that's very well put, um, Rachel. And actually I should note, um, Dan, you should also uh, jump in to maybe um, plug the holes in our memory since you've actually worked on, I think, uh, every single one of these editions with uh, Rachel and me. So you, you may remember certain things. Um, but I think that's, that's true. I mean, the, the main impulse for creating this program was because we felt that was, there was a need for it. We felt that certain films um, were in danger of being overlooked for um, precisely for being hard to classify. Um, but I think we also wanted to make a case that, um, documentary, nonfiction, was really fertile ground for experimentation and for innovation, for, you know, some of the most interesting and maybe some of the most political, um, politically engaged films that were being made um, at the time. Um, and something that we've also wanted to do is to maybe make clear that this isn't necessarily a new um, impulse. Um, you know, so we've always had a retrospective component um, in every edition. There isn't one in, in, this, in, in this particular rescheduled 2020 edition, but we can talk a little bit more about why that is and, and what, what we're actually hoping to do um, for next year's. Um, but, you know, the first edition, we did a focus on the Sensory Ethnography Lab and we invited um, the filmmakers associated with, with um, the lab to put a carte blanche, a historical program together. We, you know, our, our, our selection was recent and contemporary films, but we also threw in like some older films that we thought were important, that were hard to see, that hadn't shown very um, much at the time. Uh, so it was about just asserting that there is this, this um, especially in the uh, maybe even US or North American landscape, that there was um, a need to expand our sense of what we mean when we talk about documentary, um, and also to make the case that, this, that there is a rich uh, tradition of um, nonfiction work that is in some ways experimental, um, you know, takes risks um, in, terms of, um, in terms of formal choices. Um, and in terms, of, in terms of how the program has evolved, I don't really know if I have um, an answer to that, um, like a straightforward answer to that. But um, I, you know, we we program obviously in response to to what's out there, um, and I don't think we necessarily have like thematic, um, you know, themes in mind when we start the process. But as you know as we'll talk about, I think we, we did notice certain themes this year. Um, and that's sort of how we are dividing up um, our, our talks uh, that we'll be doing over the course of the festival. But um, yeah. if you want to jump in, Dan or, or Almudena. Um, my memory is worse than yours, than both of yours. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> I, I think we're, but, um, but then it might be, um, but it might be worthwhile to sort of talk to like, look out, you know, uh, to look outward, um, uh, you know, seven editions of Art of the Real, like, um, uh, what, you know, one has to assume that the landscape, the sort of um, nonfiction film object landscape has changed, the, uh, the festival landscape, the gallery, museum, and so on landscapes. Um, um, like with these shift, I mean, I'd be curious to hear from the two of you considering um, how this kind of informs what you're able to show in any given year. Just like, what are, do you have any like sort of impressions on the way that this landscape has kind of changed over the last seven years and that's gotten us to this point or? Yeah, I guess maybe you know, echoing a little bit about what I was saying before is that I think there are, there are a lot more homes maybe for the films, the kinds of films that we were showing early on and are still and are maybe are still showing uh which is which is great which means you know more more discourse more possibility um and and 
yeah, there's kind of more more capacity within several different um, yeah kinds of exposition, whether that's attached to um, to contemporary art or or within um, yeah, say maybe a, a more mainstream documentary festival or a mainstream festival um, in itself. There's some sense of like this being um, even if unnameable, like there, it's it's always it's always defined in terms of an other, I guess. Like there's documentary, and then there's like the weird or experimental or formally challenging or something documentary, but but it still gets a place now uh, where it did it before. And so, um, yeah, I would say that that's, that's a big difference. Um, I also say, yeah, I guess in terms of the way we've been organizing things, um, from the beginning, we've been sticking with this, um, with this approach of showing works that um, that uh, travel within within the cinema, showing all their works, uh, sometimes organized in retrospectives, but sometimes arbitrarily, just because it sort of, you know, we, we find out there's a restoration or there's a discovery uh, with these, uh, with, you know, things like Derek Jar Jarman or um, Tom Anderson, just like there's, there's an opportunistic moment to be like, okay, well, let's have a talk around this. And we've also always shown uh, works uh, that, usually we're more comfortable within contemporary art, which I'm not sure how many other festivals have been doing for that long, but um, from from the first year when we did a program with um, Amy Siegel, we've been doing kind of more uh, extensive talks um, and programs with works that would be, yeah, that would be for uh, the different the sort of black box environment or an installation environment and trying to kind of bring those into the cinema space and see what that does. Um, also thinking about works that maybe like really prioritize sound that are often shown in contemporary art and giving them a chance to be played in a, a you know, in beautiful like 5.1 in a cinema and have that experience of actually listening, you know, listening to a sound focused work, uh, you know, in the dark, you know, over, you know, over time in that way. Um, so I guess that's something that we've been doing and, and, you know, after this, you know, sort of funny year, we'll continue um, this idea of like, yeah, always, always contextualizing uh, with the past and keeping those, th you know, keeping that, those things, those, those antecedents present. And um, yeah, and otherwise just, um, we're pretty like loose around what we sort of qualify as a, a film that fits into Art of the Real. Um, and maybe that changes a bit every year, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to necessarily define that at this point. Yeah, I think we've, um maybe quite purposefully not. Um, I also was just looking at lineups of the last, you know, the last several editions um, and they feel pretty, pretty different and they feel pretty diverse, you know, which I think is a good thing. I don't think we have settled into one particular kind of mode, you know, like um, it's not like we just show essay films or observational films or, you know, um, uh, but um, yeah, and sorry, Dan, I, I forgot what the initial question was. I don't know about like, um, you know, how the, yeah, I guess it was just kind of about how the shifting like festival, museum, gallery, mm -hmm. and so on context kind of like impact um, what's in or the real year to year. And so on. Yeah, and I, you know, I think um, I, I agree with Rachel that it's, um, I think there are more um, possible showcases for a lot of the work that we're interested in, which I think is a good thing. And even at, you know, um, in terms of Lincoln Center year on programming, I think a lot of the work that, some of the work that we show in the New York Film Festival or new directors, new films could have shown in Art of the Real. So I think it's just about figuring out what makes for a balanced um, program uh, year to year. Cool. Um, so why don't we, um, why don't we stop looking back and start looking ahead uh, to uh, this year's oh. edition, which begins tomorrow. Um, uh, First of all, I think it might make sense to kind of like um, to kind of set up the discussion to come to maybe just take like this broader view of the program and um, all three of you, I think, could uh, could probably speak to some of the um, to like some of the thematic um, strands within within um, the program. Um, we, of course, we don't go into formulating the program with like preconceived notions of what we want the festival to be about, but then once the, the program's done, inevitably, it, it's probably about something. So, um, so yeah, I mean, what, what, and also it doesn't have to just be like, now I think about it, it doesn't really just have to be thematic concerns. We can also talk about like um, films that share um, aesthetic strategies, which are probably just as important. So, um, so yeah, what are some of the kind of, um, 
what are some of these kind of commonalities or threads that viewers can kind of like, you know, latch onto over the next couple of weeks and explore? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I think there is, well, there's a lot of connections, but first of all, there is a very um, big presence of landscape and nature, but also, which has always been present in documentary, I guess, but there is an idea of interspecies and relationality between who lives in these places, how they react to these places, and how one thing influences each other in relationship with economic structures and where we are. Right now, I think that's a common thread that you can see throughout in a lot of the films. And also about what it means to live together, what it means to be in a community. And if you put, to, if you put this in a, in a political context, also, I think it really responds to the idea of what it means, what is sovereignty? Is it something that is a social contract or is it something that it has to do with who lives where and it has to do with the body and it has to do with the landscape and with something bigger that is not just the Western concept of social contract? I think that's present in a lot of the films. Do you want to yeah, know each other? Yeah, I was going to say if you want to talk about it. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should mention a few of those films, people who are interested. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, Cenote, right, which is... Um, is looking uh, from um, is looking at the Yucatan area, the sinkholes in the Yucatan area, which are geographical spots, right? And how they speak of something else. They they are echoes of 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 the Mayas that lived in these spaces. Or Mothni from Sky Hopinga, right, which is is um, making present or or doing a um, using poetic forms to to really reflect on uh, mythology and how mythology is present in the body of the people that move through these spaces, but also is present on not is present on non-human objects that are in museums or that are in others in other places. So those are two examples that come to mind that I'm really excited about this year um, that really make a difference in the way of how landscape is thought through and communities as well. Yeah, I think several other films you could apply that to um, as well, like um, Ezekiel Bianco's La Vida en Comun and um, uh, Burn Island. You know, we I think there's the natural world is, is, is very, very present um, in, in, in the selection this year. Um, I also want to just mention, we, we don't have a, a panel organized on this topic, um, but um, Rachel was talking about sound, um, and I think th there's a lot of, like, sound is, is really important, I think, in, in, in many of the films um, that we're showing. Um, uh, in the very first edition, we did um, a sort of a listening session, I guess, with Ernst Carroll, and he has um, uh, a, a work that he's co-directed with um, Veronica Kusuma -Yati, Yati called Expedition Content. It's um, an augmented sound work. Uh, an almost imageless film. Um, and I think it's just, you know, one of several, uh, several titles in the lineup where sound is important, where voice is important, where language is important, um, where the spoken word, um, you know, oral histories, oral traditions. I think that's important in Sky Popinka's film as well. Also in um, Josh Bonetta's film, The Two Sites, which is also a landscape film. So there are a lot of these sort of inter, you know, overlapping, uh, overlapping uh, thematic concerns uh, that I think many of the films um, approach in, in really interesting ways, which is one reason we thought it would be great to sort of put several of these filmmakers, you know, in conversation uh, with one another in, in these talks. Um, another sound, soundscape work that, uh, that I'll flag, not not landscape so much, but um, just because Sarah Rinlands, Those at a Distance, has this amazing soundtrack of, um, yeah, just this amazing mix of um, various processes of labor and work and craft, uh, be it be it kind of a, a really, a really t sort of turned up um, track of the work itself or the kind of conversations that happen uh, between laborers over that work. It's a super beautiful, beautiful work that kind of zeroes in on the the act of the act of crafts and the and, and the act of kind of the making uh, and tr like sort of a transformation of objects. Um, since since uh, Dennis just mentioned it, we, we we might as well get into it now. We maybe we can um, introduce um, the uh, 
the the change that we've made to the well the way that we're going to be doing the uh, talks uh, in this year's festival it's it's um it's a bit different uh than what we've done before but it's kind of a logical you know in other ways it's kind of there's a lot of uh, continuity so um i don't know could uh do one of you want to sort of introduce um this new format just so that people know what to expect over the next couple of weeks um sure i mean i think you know one thing we felt one thing that's been really missing from these online festivals which is um, a fact of life in 2020 um, and i think obviously there are a lot of benefits to this in, in terms of you know accessibility and, and being able to reach um, audiences um, beyond who is typically able to you know buy a ticket and come to a cinema um, one thing we're really missing is is just this element of of liveness and of, of this communal interaction. Um, you know, we did the New York Film Festival online and, and um, a lot, we pre-recorded every single, you know, introduction and, and, and Q&A. Um, and we wanted to not do that uh, for, for this festival um, and, you know, do something that we didn't in, in, for the New York Film Festival as well, which, is, which I thought worked really well was the live talks where we brought different configurations of filmmakers together. Um, and so not every single um, filmmaker, feature filmmaker in the lineup is able to join us, unfortunately, because of um, extreme time differences uh, that would make it pretty tough for some people. Um, but I think most of our feature filmmakers, um, maybe in a couple of shorts filmmakers, will also be, be joining us um, starting on Saturday. Um, and for each one, I think we have like at least three filmmakers in conversation. Um, and we have various groupings um, that, um, I don't know, Rachel, if you want to talk a little bit about some of those. Yeah, it was actually a nice, a nice kind of exercise to find some of the, um, some of the commonalities and also some of the kind of present urgencies in, in some of the works. Um, I'm thinking about uh, looking back and it's it's not that it's not that far in in actual time since um you know originally we selected these films say in like January December, but it's been a long long year, <laughs> um, and it feels it feels like a kind of time travel to look at the, these works again ahead of this festival, and especially um, I was thinking especially that we have a program uh, called Communities and Social Forms uh, which is coming up next next Friday, um, which has so much, um, it's so much around, um, you know, ha kind of happenstance interaction. Um, I, thinking about um, Ignacio Guerrero's I Never, I Never Climbed the Florencia, which is this, this, you know, beautiful investigation of, you know, his own, the people in his own neighborhood, uh, who many of whom have been there their whole lives. Um, and here for life, this kind of on, on, like ensemble of, of, you know, people who sort of just come together in this, in this work. Um, and these things for me feel like just way more kind of right on the surface, way more like just this like, oh yeah, people, people coming together and making something like in a spontaneous way or meeting on the street and chatting, like these things some, somehow feel differently urgent. I don't know if, um, you know, you want to talk about any of the other programs or any of the other talks? Yeah, um, um, I think... I mean, I was thinking about uh, more than human relations as one, the other theme program that I'm pretty excited about. I can't remember now the date. Um, I don't have it in front of me. I was looking at it. Uh, 20, 21st. Yeah, they are, they are happening Friday, Saturday, um, starting this week and then the week after. Um, just so people know about the four talks. Um, but I'm, for instance, uh, Sarah's film, I don't know if we, full title here. Those that a distance resemble another, uh, how with such a, well, no, I don't want to say simple because it, it was a lot of work into it, just the setup of it, right? And a lot of the work that she put on it, learning how to handle and how to restore and how to create these replicas of objects, but how the deep reflection that she's doing, right? Or how how do we live through things or how cinema can, can bring a window to a reality or how it's cre recreating a reality and how can we think about the copy of things and what is it that we look through in this in this windows in this zoom in this how our life comes into as well when i'm here you're seeing my room right or how 
and and how do we approach reality really and how what are the copies of reality that we are actually living through so i think that's one of the things that i think the more especially when we watch it in january and when i watch it now the more i think about it and also working in a museum i work in a museum and uh and I work there, but I'm not there. I'm working from home now. And what does that mean? You know, I think it's it's a very, I the, the more I've watched it, the more I think it is a very relevant film. Also thinking about the gestures, also thinking about what is it in the gestures, the, the nails that she's wearing, not painted, and um, and all these different things that seem to be not that evident, but are, are there. And the focus attention that requires, right? That now more than ever, I think, it is a very different way of attention that we have now watching films through the computer, right? If we think about it. So I think it is a very relevant film to watch now and a very, in this context specifically, it's always relevant, but in this context, I think he has a lot to, to bring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe we, can, we can. Oh, oh sounds like getting some reverb. Um, uh, it sounds like um, uh, it, the, it might be a good moment actually to, to sort of like train our focus on something that both Al Medina and Rachel just um, brought up this kind of um, this pretty unique experience for all of us of like um, this program having been done uh, before uh, before the fall uh, as it were and um, and now we're I mean like the I mean like the biblical uh, fall <laughs> not the like oh, uh, not the season um, but um, but I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. So we're in this weird position of, I think we had, we all had like impressions uh, of these films way back when, and uh, we're in a pretty different place now. So I'm just wondering if uh, the three of you have had any kind of, um, have you been sort of like thinking comparatively just about like, um, well, not even comparatively, but just sort of reflecting on, you know, what these films, what some of these films represent to you now versus what they did uh, back when we programmed the festival. There are a lot of ways to go with this. Um, there, uh, you know, we could say, uh, for instance, um, a Shape of Things to Come by Lisa Marie Malloy and Judith Nidecki, uh, which is about a um, kind of uh, loner, loner prepper um, outsider on, 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 on the US uh, border, um, has a certain different, uh, kind of intense, intense resonance right now. Um, in it probably seen at any, any point in, over the last year would have a different one, but especially at this moment of uh, such in, increased uh, divisiveness in, in, in the US. Um, and this one version of an attempt to kind of escape escape all of it. Um, and yeah, and, and leave off of the crib, but also, um, yeah, also in like a, a, a deep and almost kind of frightening solitude. I think that would be that's that's a film that would be newly resonant for me um you know otherwise yeah there are so many um from from like to speak i guess personally i um spend a lot of a lot of the inside time getting to know the like objects and plants and things and things around me in more intimate ways so there are a lot of um of the you know the more kind of Calmer, restrained um, portrait films like Hassan Farani's um, or Alexander Cuesta's Notes and Prints on Love uh, that just train their eye on, say, one person or kind of a mundanity that also speaks to me differently now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think another another sort of thread running through the program is a lot of film. A lot of films deal with solitude or absence in some way, which obviously are <laughs> in a really fun themes. way. <laughs> in a really, in a, in a really, in a, in a very, uh, yeah, in, in, in a really intelligent uh, way. Um, and I think obviously these are themes that are newly resonant and relevant. Um, um, if, if I can throw one in, uh, I, I would Please. say um, a Worker to Whom Does the World Belong is a film I've thought, I've thought about, uh, you know, uh, a lot, especially considering the kind of um, the role that, like the the role that, like the American working class did or didn't play in the election that just happened, and 
um, the things that people were like saying about the working class in this country and so on. And I think um, what already seemed like a really impressive, you know, sort of this like gesture of connecting um, our intensely fraught present to and also fraught um, uh, past to sort of look for some insight like that, that, um, that gesture just seems like especially profound to me now, especially considering how like, you know, if we've all, we've all had our minds, or at least in the US, like we've all had our minds on like politics um, for the last, you know, in the run up to the election. And that discussion is like, seems like pretty ahistorical a lot of the time. And so, um, yeah, the gesture of just of actually talking about history and like looking, looking to it for some sort of, um, to have some kind of like valence on, on today, it just seems like really important and to like actually do that and not in like a phony disingenuous way. So I would, I would throw that one in there. Just to backtrack. So the film is about, um, <laughs> uh, about, yeah. So, uh, minor strikes in, uh, Asturias in Spain, uh, ahead of the Franco dictatorship. So just to, yeah, to add that. It also reflects, you know, on this idea of like, where is the working class solidarity? Where is it? No, it's reflecting on in Spain, there was a time where all the miners were really together. That was what it would really, you know, uh, raise everyone together, which is totally relevant now, especially as Dan mentioned because of the election, no? Um, but not, not only in, in, in the US, I think the lack of a working, or the, the, this dream of the working class solidarity seems to be, you know, um, minding down, no? And, uh, and now in this moment that we are all separate is when it seems that we're all um, moaning the solidarity, I felt like the film becomes, especially for me, I mean, also being from there, from specifically that area, <laughs> well, I can totally relate, yeah. yeah. Um, let's see, um, and uh, maybe before, I don't, actually, I don't think we have any, we don't have any questions from the audience, we just have an anonymous attendee said, hello, smiley face. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, but um, but maybe um, maybe we can kind of wrap it up by just um, I mean we've talked about a number of titles, um, but um, but it might be it might be useful just for people who don't know these films and so on to kind of call out um, just like a handful of you know a few highlights uh, each. Um, um, Actually, yeah, before we do that, um, Dan, uh, I do you, uh, Rachel and um, Almudina, you both took the lead on the shorts programming this year. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a really nice selection of shorts. Um, we have one shorts program that's showing actually for free, um, so that's accessible to everyone. Um, and we also have um, shorts that are paired with uh, features. So, I mean, we, you can talk about that or we can also just go to Dan's question. And and well, throw some shorts into. We can probably we can probably do both. our recommendations. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we can do both. But I also before we get into the recommendations, I wanna um, I wanna uh, put it in a word for our art for the art of the real all access pass, which uh, is a, is good value, fifty bucks. Uh, Excellent value. Film. Yeah. So um, so yeah, uh, check that out. Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't. Yeah, Dennis. However, you wanna. Whichever way you want to go, it's fine with me. Oh, you guys can just mention some 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 of the shorts as well um, as you call out yeah. your favorites, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the um, there's a really there are a couple of really nice pairings. Um, one is the Jessica Sarah Women's film um, that um, Ben and I both mentioned. Those at a distance is paired with a film called Bugs and Beasts Before the Law which is about a history of animal trials. Uh, that's, yeah, that's just, uh, just wild and super, a uh, super interesting pairing. It's like this, this, the idea sort of, you know, animals, animals as people, objects as, ob objects as sort of active uh, in the two different works are really, I think is really exciting for me. It would be one. And um, I would also hype the shorts program um, as a, as a through run thing to, to see. Um, there's, there's, oh, there's, various kind of overlapping highlights of, you know, of like eco, eco speculation, um, various kinds of, yeah, different kinds of, yeah, not just eco futurisms, but kind of personal, um, creative futurisms, um, aliens and different kinds of sci-fi tropes. Um, 
yeah, it's 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 fun and wild and very rich. So um, and it's free. So I would really recommend that for them. Yeah, and uh, feminism as well yeah. from no Anya's uh, Anya's Trislina. A short all things equal for instance right talking about um it's, it's a it's a found footage film with material from um uh, talking about women in the in in russia and in the eastern Bloc. so she's she said it in them all um in a film and then there's morgan quentin's missing time as well which is also with found footage there's a number of films with found footage that i think i'm really are really really exciting um and then also another pair that i wanted to mention that i think we talked a little bit about it but I think it's a highlight for me at least is um, Bird Island by Sergio da Costa and Maya Cosa, which is a pair with Sound Garden by Jamie Cha, which to me that, that short was, I think is beautifully done. And it puts together, the short again, um, it, it puts together um, a counselors, women counselors talking about different mental situations with their patients together with trees that are built um, to bring into urban environments. So it's a really nice uh, meditation on anxiety, personal anxiety in relation to what is happening environmentally or what is happening in a city um, and, and putting both things together in a, in a in discussion. And I think it's a really n nice pairing as well if you think about Bird Island, right? Where there is this relationship between uh, the animals and the people that works helping these animals and how they actually need each other so much. And it's not only the birds that need the help from the people, but also um, the persons that need the, the birds to have a purpose. So I, I, I think it's a, both of those films are a wonderful meditation right now to think about what we're doing with what it is around us and how we're feeling and the anxiety that we're living right now. Um, I think we've already mentioned almost every film in the lineup, but uh, I will just note that, you know, we've always had a pretty um, robust Latin American presence in Art of the Real. Um, and this year we have, um, again, actually it's mostly, it's almost, almost all Argentina, um, but uh, we do have um, some three, three and a half, if you count Jessica, uh, uh, Sarah Renlund's, which is an Argentina co-production. Um, but I wanna, yeah, I think I'll just call out that very strong Argentinian contingent of films, um, which uh, we have Eloisa Solas's The, the Faculties, which is um, a sort of verite observational film about students preparing for the final exams. But I think it's one that really demonstrates just the possibilities of that observational mode um, done done well. Um, Ezekiel Yanko's uh, La Vida en Camun, which we've talked about, which I think is a really interesting um, way to approach hybrid uh, filmmaking. I think he, he, he thinks about it in, in a really smart um, and effective way. And then the third one is um, John, Jonathan Perel's Corporate Accountability, which I think is one of the sharpest like political films in, in, in the lineup. It's about, um, something that that Johnny has dealt with in his other films, the history of the um, military dictatorship in um, Argentina. Mm -hmm. Dan, do you have any favorites? <laughs> um, they're all they're all my favorite, Dennis. But um, <laughs> but I'll put it in a word for uh, a film I don't think we've mentioned yet. Um, Suzanne Devoe, the um, Louisa Hamim um, film. This is um, sort of a historical, you know, portrait uh, documentary. Um, uh, it's about a, a French geographer and adventurer recounting her life, uh, loves like trials, tribulations, the ground she covered. And it also gets into, um, it gets into her own sort of her, her understanding of feminism. It, it has to deal with like her reflections on modernity. It's, um, it's a film that contains a lot. Uh, and I think, um, uh, yeah, it really, it, I mean, this will sound corny, but it like really is a, a trip to, to watch it. So, um, so yeah, I mean, um, I, yeah, we still don't have any questions from our, from our uh, few audience members. So, um, maybe we can just, uh, I don't know, wrap it up with, um, anything you guys just want to, anything you want to add before we, uh, before they chase us out. So, um. Yeah. Come to the talks, and then that'll help to also, you know, plan plan some of your agenda from there, starting uh, Saturday, day after next. Yeah. Um, nothing else really. All access passes. It's a great deal. I mean, there's a lot to discover in this lineup. Um, 
16 film or 16 plus films for 50 bucks. Can't beat that kind of, <laughs> can't beat that kind of value. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank, thank you all. See you all in the days to come. Saturday.